Welcome to Unit 15, Video 4, KSP. By the end of this video, you should be able to write and interpret a KSP expression. You should be able to use KSP values to compare the solubility of salts. You should be able to use solubility to calculate KSP. You should be able to use KSP to calculate solubility. And you should be able to use the ion product to predict whether a salt will precipitate. Solubility equilibrium is the equilibrium system between the solid solute and the dissolved solute in a solution. This applies to saturated solutions only. We know a solution is saturated if there's some undissolved salt in the bottom of the container, meaning the solution has already d uh, dissolved as much of the solid as it possibly can, and everything that's left sinks to the bottom undissolved. You can see this in the beaker at the bottom right, the circles at the bottom of the beaker represent undissolved solid salt, and the, beaker, or the circles within the beaker represent dissolved or dissociated ions from the salt. Solubility equilibria looks at the opposite pro processes of dissolution and crystallization. Dissolution is the process in which an ionic solid dissolves or dissociates in water. This is represented by the blue arrows in the beaker at the bottom. Precipitation or crystallization is the process by which ions leave a solution and form a solid. This is represented by the red arrows at the bottom. When the rate of dissolution equals the rate of precipitation, we have an equilibrium system. We can describe the equilibrium system using a k-value. This is another k-eq. Here we're calling it KSP because it's specifically the KSKEQ for solubility. So SP stands for solubility product, KSP solubility product constant. This is the equilibrium constant that will describe the solubility of a salt. Solubility, recall, is how much of a given solid will dissolve in a given amount of water. Solubility is usually measured in moles per liter. Recall that moles per liter is the same as molarity, represented by capital M. You might also see solubility represented in grams per liter. In other words, this is how many moles, or how many grams, will dissolve in a given volume of solution. Let's consider the dissolving of calcium fluoride. In order to write a KSP expression for this solution, we need to first write the dissociation equation. Here we have solid calcium fluoride dissociating into Ca2 plus ions plus 2 moles of F minus ions, since it's a 2 to 1 ratio, CaF2. Writing our solubility expression, we get Ksp is equal to the concentration of calcium ions times the concentration of fluoride ions squared. Recall that solids do not go in a, K, in a K expression, therefore there's no denominator here. In fact, since solubility equilibria always looks at the dissolving of a solid, we will never have a denominator in a KSP expression. So what does KSP tell us? Take a look at the KSP values for these salts and consider which of these salts is the most soluble in water at the particular temperature we're dealing with here. If you said calcium carbonate, you're correct. Notice that calcium carbonate has the highest value for KSP. Recall that these are negative exponents, so that's actually the largest number there. Therefore, it has the greatest solubility. Its equilibrium position lies farthest to the right. In other words, the concentration of dissolved ions for calcium carbonate is higher than those of silver chloride and silver bromide. It is more soluble. More of it will dissolve in a given volume of water. We can use solubility data to calculate the KSP for a given salt. For instance, consider this problem. Here we're told that copper bromide has a solubility of 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter at 25 degrees Celsius. In other words, at that temperature, 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of copper bromide will dissolve in each liter of water. We can use this to calculate the KSP. First, we need to write the dissociation equation. 
Copper bromide will dissociate to form one mole of copper and one mole of bromide. Then we write our K expression. Since there are no, expo since there are no coefficients here, we have exponents of one, and again, there's no denominator because our reactant is a solid. Since we know how much copper bromide will dissolve in one liter, we know the concentrations of copper and of bromide at equilibrium. Therefore, we can plug them in. 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth will be the concentration of each ion. Because if 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth formula units of copper bromide dissolves, we get a one-to-one -one ratio. We get 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth coppers and that same amount of bromide. Solving for KSP, we get a KSP of 4.0 times 10 to the negative eighth. Again, no units on our K value. Here's a problem to try on your own. There's two tricks in this problem. First, notice that you're given grams per liter instead of moles per liter, so you'll need to start by converting grams to moles. Also notice that here you're given AlCl3, which means our ratio of dissolved ions will not be one to one as it was in the previous problem. Pause the video here and see if you can solve this problem. When you come back, I'll reveal the answer. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice that once you convert your grams per liter into moles per liter, you have to take into account the 3 to 1 ratio between chloride and aluminum. Therefore, the chloride concentration will be 3 times that of aluminum, since for every 0.33 moles of AlCl3 that dissolves, we get 0.33 moles of aluminum, but we get 3 times as many moles of chloride. We can also go the other direction and use KSP to solve for solubility. Here we're given the KSP of silver iodide and asked for its solubility. Again, I'm going to start by writing the dissociation equation and then the K expression. But here, since I know the K value, I'm going to fill that in. I know that the KSP is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16th. Since I know that the, the concentration of Ag plus and I minus will be equal, since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, I'm going to call them both x and plug x in as our concentrations. Therefore, I get 1.5 times 10 to the negative 16th, our Ksp value, is equal to x times x, or x squared. Solving for x, I find that the solubility of silver iodide is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 8. In other words, in every liter of solution, I can dissolve 1.2 times 10 to the negative 8th moles of silver iodide. This will also give me a silver concentration and an iodide concentration of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 8th each, since it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Here's one to try on your own. Again, there's a trick in this problem. Here, our ratio between our ions is not 1 to 1, but 1 to 2. Take that into consideration when you solve this problem. Pause the video here, and when you come back, I'll reveal the answer. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice in this case, I called PB2 plus X, but I know that my relationship between PB and Br minus should be 1 to 2. Therefore, Br minus is equal to 2x. This gives me an expression of 4x to the third after I square my 2x and multiply it by the other x. Solving for x, I get a solubility of 0 0.0118 moles per liter. In other words, for every, for every liter of solution, I can dissolve 0 0.0118 moles of lead bromide, which will give me a lead concentration of 0 0.0118 moles per liter, but a bromide concentration of twice that amount due to the 2 to 1 ratio. Finally, we can use KSP to predict whether or not precipitation will occur at a given temperature or when two solutions are mixed. We do this using the ion product. This is the Q value for KSP expressions. This is just like the Q we used before. 
So here, we're given initial concentrations, which we plug into our equilibrium expression, in order to compare Q and K to see if the system is at equilibrium, meaning it's saturated, or if there's too much ion dissolved, meaning it will precipitate. So if Q is greater than K, that tells us that we have too many ions in solution, and those ions will precipitate to form a solid. If Q is less than K, that means that the solution is unsaturated. We could actually add more ions and dissolve more solid. Therefore, no precipitation will occur. And of course, if Q is equal to K, we're at equilibrium and the solution is saturated. Let's look at this example together. Here we're given 0.01 moles of PBCl2 dissolved in 150 milliliters of hot water. Then we cool the solution down. Recall that solubility changes with temperature. So at 25 degrees, our KSP is 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. At this temperature, will PBCl2 precipitate? Let's find out. First, we'll write our dissociation equation and then our equilibrium expression. This is always where we start. Now, we need to determine our ion concentrations. Since we have 0.01 moles of PbCl2, we'll get 0.01 moles of Pb2 plus because it's a one-to-one -one ratio divided by our volume of solution, which gives us a Pb2 plus concentration of 0.067. Our chloride concentration will be double that, since it's a 2 to 1 ratio between lead chloride and chloride ions. Now, plugging these values into our Q expression, we get a Q value of 1.2 times 10 to the negative third. Notice this value is greater than our K value. Since this value is greater, that means that our ion concentrations are too high and precipitation will occur. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned how to write and interpret a KSP expression. Then we used KSP values to compare the solubility of salts. Recall that the highest KSP value corresponded to the most soluble salt. Then we used solubility to calculate KSP and KSP to calculate solubility. And finally, we looked at how to use the ion product or the Q value to predict whether a salt will precipitate.